Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Ruchi 5 is going to show us how to weigh density. Oh boy. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light a dumpster fire and have some fun. You know, since Ruchi 5 couldn't explain how relative density disequilibrium really works, I guess she just decided to debunk it herself. Let's listen to this. So here, from the flatearth.ws website, it says an object falls down because of Earth's gravitational attraction. Well, first of all, that's wrong. There is no attraction. In mainstream consensus today, it's actually an object following a geodesic or following the bending of space-time. We know that gravity is simply objects moving through curved space-time. But that doesn't stop it from acting like a force and appearing to be a physical attraction. There's nothing wrong with thinking about it that way. This is what happened when I ran Cavendish. We clearly see an attraction. We clearly measure something that appears to be a force. Not an attraction, just following a path. Not attracted. Um, but some denominations of flat earth claim that an object falls down due to its density, not gravity. Uh-huh. Uh, so then they've got a balance scale, two litres of water on one side, one litre of water on the other side. Same material, same atmosphere, same density, different mass, different volume. Yes, correct. Uh, by putting two objects of equal density and different mass against each other using a balance, it is easy to, that, easy to see that the object's density is not the reason it falls down. Right, but then you've change the volume so if you keep the density the same and you change the volume then you're not measuring density difference are you you're measuring mass difference so if you keep the density the same which is like kg m3 then you keep one m3 because obviously kg m3 so basically the mass per unit volume so if you keep the unit volume the same so if you keep the volume the same and you keep the density the same then they won't both neither rise nor fall. The balance scale will not tip. So you're saying if I have a balance and I have one liter of water on both ends of the balance and the water has a density of about one kilogram per liter and I put this balance in a vacuum chamber so there's no medium, the balance will remain stationary. It won't tip. But that also means that if I put the balance at an angle like that, same vacuum, same water, same volume, it also wouldn't move. There's nothing to cause it to move. Or I could put it this way. The same thing would happen. Nothing. The balance would stay just like you see it. But we know that that does not happen. We know if we put equal masses on both sides of the balance, you get that. But the reason you get that is because the forces are balanced, Rachie. One kilogram mass has a weight associated with it of 9.81 newtons. You would have a weight of 9.81 newtons on both ends of the balance. The forces are balanced, so the balance is balanced. On the other hand, if we increase the mass on one side to two kilograms, then we no longer have balanced forces. We have 19.62 newtons on one side where the two kilogram mass is and only 9.81 newtons on the other side. The balance does tip in this case and it tips because of that weight. In a previous video you did, you showed us this formula, which is correct. The weight would be the density of the object minus the density of the medium times the volume of the object times what you called little d. But you define little d as an acceleration rate due to disequilibrium and you gave it a value of 9.81 meters per second per second. That's little g. All you've done is rename the acceleration of gravity the acceleration rate due to disequilibrium. And you have no reason for doing that. So let's run through the numbers very quickly and you'll see that the density of air is about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. Water is about 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The difference in the density is 998.8 kilograms per cubic meter and using little g, the 9.81 meters per second per second that we can measure at sea level in a vacuum, we end up with 9.8 newtons 
of weight on one side of the balance and 19.6 newtons on the other side. This is due to the imbalance in the forces on the balance ratio, not because of density, strictly because of differences in weight. This seems to debunk relative density disequilibrium pretty thoroughly. Because they will be the same density. However, if you put the same volume on again, but you use different densities, then the more dense one will go down and the less dense the up. And this is just a balance scale. So obviously it's just measuring. Obviously you've now confused yourself to the point that you have no idea how to talk your way out of it. it, it well, it depends. It can measure both mass and density. Like it says, if you have the volume the same, then and the density the same, then obviously they will neither rise nor fall. So therefore it's measuring the density and saying the density is the same. If you then increase the volume but keep the, vol um, keep the density the same, then obviously it's not measuring density anymore, it's measuring mass. If you have the same volume but different densities, then obviously the more denser one will go down and the less denser one up, because then you're measuring relative density. Like, well, not relative density, but one density relative to another on the balance scale. So obviously the more dense one will go down then, if you keep the volume the same. So then you will be measuring density. Main winding was of the normal lotus or delta type placed in panendermic semi-boloid slots of the stator. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the grammys. So you can both measure density and mass depending on what you use it for. But if you're going to measure density, then you're going to have to keep the volume the same because density is per unit volume. Oh dear. A liter of water has exactly the same density as an entire swimming pool full of water or a drop of water. Where do you get these crazy ideas from? You're not keeping the volume the same, so therefore you're not measuring the density, am you? You're not measuring one more dense than another or whether they're the same density because you're not keeping the volume the same. So, of course, this is going to have more mass go down and less mass up because the volume's not the same. So you say an object falls down due to gravity, but not its density. Okay, so basically you're saying this measures mass and that more mass will go down. Except that's not the case, is it? For example, I can have a rock and I can have a cruise ship. I throw the rock into water, it has little mass compared to the cruise ship. The cruise ship floats. The little mass of rock sinks. Now what has the most mass? The cruise ship has the most mass, right? And the rock has the littlest mass out of the two. Yet the cruise ship floats and the rock sinks. Now you're switching horses in midstream, Rachie. You're talking about Archimedes' principle. Objects float because the weight of the water they are displacing is exactly equal to the weight of the object. This is not about density. This is about the weight of the water being displaced. Yet the cruise ship has more mass than the rock. Yet the cruise ship didn't go down, but the rock did. The reason the cruise ship didn't go down is because it was less dense than the water. The reason the rock went down is because it's more dense than the water. Again, density proven right there. So they obviously pick that this one's heavier. You can check it if you want, and you can have a balance out. And so since it's heavier, it's going to sink. And since this one's lighter, it's going to float. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Okay. Well, all right. But when I take them out, actually I usually have them a little close together. If I fumble enough, and the kids are used to me fumbling, sometimes on purpose and sometimes accidentally, if I fumble and I drop it, then we've got a problem here. Well, if that happened, what happens if I take this piece of candle and drop it in the other beaker? And it sinks. So now the heavy one is floating and the light one has sunk. All right, what's happening here? And I wait, and somebody will say something, and somebody will say something else. You tricked us. They're not from the same piece of candle. I pull them out and have a student test them. The, believe it or not, the last thing they want to tell me is that they are different liquids. And that is the case. 
And the point I'm trying to make to them is that it's not the difference in the candles and it's not, that makes something float or sink. It's not the difference in the liquids that will make something float or sink. It's the difference in the density of the floating object and the liquid that you put it into. It's not that this candle is heavier than the other one. It's not that it's more or less dense than the other. It's that the candle and both of them are less dense than the liquid they're floating in. And in this case, they're more dense than the liquid they're floating in. So we're comparing the object to the liquid and not to each other. That's Archimedes' principle dating back to about 250 BC. The net weight is the weight of the object minus the weight of the medium it displaces. If the net weight is positive, then the object sinks. If the net weight is negative, the object floats. If the net weight is zero, the object is neutrally buoyant. In other words, it doesn't do either. Relative density disequilibrium is simply gravity with another name. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. Ring the little bell if you want notifications. Shout out to the patrons and PayPals. I really appreciate everything you guys do. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.